Welcome everyone, it's so great to have you here. I have an amazing guest with me. For those of you that are a regular in my community, welcome back and how fun that we're doing video together. I am Bernadette Logue, spiritual life coach. For those that don't know me, I've been doing this work for over 10 years, helping predominantly women, but welcome any men that are tuning in to align with their soul for a life of purpose, fulfillment, and magic. And I have an incredible human who I am also really so honored to call a friend, Dr. Mario Torres Leon. So I'm going to share a little bit about him. Welcome, Mario, before I start <laughs> talking all about you. So great to have you here tuning in from your home in Colorado. So Mario is a Harvard, Yale and Columbia College of Physicians and Surgeons educated radiologist. He is the founder and chief executive of AlivePartner.com, which we're going to find all about shortly. Uh, his work has impacted millions through his uh, work on television, radio, Thrive Doctors and other awesome platforms. And he has created this Alive Partner platform and work to my crude way of putting it is help men experience greater success in relationships. But all the men and all the women tune in and listen up because I've been doing this work a very long time and relationships is a really big area of challenge for a lot of people, for a lot of women on the spiritual path and for their men. So I wanted Mario to come and share his wisdom in this space to bring a man's perspective and a male teacher's perspective into this also Mario lives this work in his own relationship so welcome Mario <laughs> thank you for having me here and I just want to acknowledge you in front of your community for being the courageous woman that I have experienced during the time of our friendship and getting acquainted um, I have to say something to all of you who are listening to, to Bernadette it is one of the rarest things ever that when somebody is going to invite a guest to their particular community, like I am being privileged right now for that host or hostess in your case to take the time to do due diligence about who is it that you're bringing to present to your audience and expose your community to. And I'm getting goosebumps as I'm saying that because I have been interviewed many times. I have been a guest in many different programs, shows, and so on. And typically be people just don't know anything about you and they just mm -hmm. recite what you gave them, which I think is very dishonest. And yeah. you have really everything that I have shared with you. You've kindly taken a look at it. So I, I feel so honored to be your guest today and to be in service to you and your community. Thank you. Oh, bless you, bless you. And for those tuning in that might already know Mario or are, are part of my community and have been here. Uh, for a long time I have delved into his work not only because it's important to me before I bring somebody to the community and it is respectful but also because it's fascinating to me right super fascinating so I have done his um, like I've used his resources I've actually been through his entire course that he has the Alive Partner course um, it is all gold 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 so we're talking today about how to have a loving connected conscious partnership and FYI, the reason we need to have that conversation, everybody, is because so many of us have not had a conscious, loving, connected partnership, despite trying really hard. So if you are single, this is fabulous for you to listen to because it sets you up to have great, conscious, loving partnership. If you are in relationship and you are struggling or having challenges, or you're a man or a woman, this is going to help you. And, you know, we're both, you know, Mario, we're both in conscious relationships and we've both had to show up for our relationships to learn and grow and face our own stuff. And, and that's how you end up being in a healthy relationship, right? I'm 20 years tomorrow with my um, beloved Aaron. It's our anniversary tomorrow. And you've been, right, you've been like with your yeah. partner, your wife for a very long time as well. So we know what it's like to do the work. So we're not here to teach out of a textbook, people. We're here sharing what is real about the relationship nuts and bolts. So can you tell me how you came to this work? Because obviously you're a physician. Yes. Uh, and now you've got this amazing body of work called the Alive Partner um, course and materials, alivepartner.com. What brought you to this work in the first place? That's a great question. Thank you. Um... I think the, the easiest way to say that is I have made so many mistakes as a man in a partnership that 
it got to such a climatic and dramatic point in our relationship that I realized after over 25 years, well, this started before I got married and then basically escalated in a negative way in many regards during our marriage, that something is always missing, particularly for men who are in relationships like the women in your community. You see, you are serving this community of women who are truly committed to an ascension path, to a spiritual development, who are seekers, who are no strangers to danger, colloquially speaking. They want to do new things. They want to experience new things. And by the way, I am really happy about that because women like all of you who are watching this and the men who are actually also in this journey who may be part of a community are truly the spiritual and energetic leaders of the world. And I am thoroughly convinced on that one. But what happens is, as the woman, in my experience and, and the experience of your community members, is in that path and new awarenesses are coming in, that spiritual expansion is happening, there is a diverging path that starts to be built inside the relationship. What do I mean by that? Well, this woman is starting to really see life under a very different light. She's starting to seek different kinds of experiences because once you really, your eyes have been opened, it's very difficult to go back to the old ways that were not working for you. In many ways, the reason why we do the kind of work that you serve your community with and the journey that I have been on is because for whatever reason in our lives, we start to have little things that say, there's got to be a different way to do this. I have been a seeker myself, even though I'm a male, uh, for many years. And medicine was a huge catalyst for me because I have been faced with very, very difficult situations, life and death situations where I have had people in my hands as an interventional radiologist operating on them, people dying on my table. I have seen things that are, are no, you know, difficult to understand in your community, but for other people, perhaps they may be, they may be a little bit weird. And what happens is as you start that journey of discovering new things, it's different when you're on your own. And then when there's somebody else that comes into the mix, now suddenly it gets really interesting, right? Or we could say very challenging or very difficult because your own experiences, and I'm not assigning any positivity or negativity, just basically your experiences, as they get to be combined inside of that container, they can be extremely difficult to navigate. As I went through that, and I have thought about my life as a man, where I came from, I was born in Puerto Rico, the kind of upbringing that I had, and then coming into this relationship with my woman, it started to accelerate the challenges and difficulties that I was experiencing. And the more that I went into this, the seeker in me started to say, okay, I'm going to have to look for coaches. I'm going to have to go into courses. I'm going to have to go into therapy. I wanted to know, and I, I don't care about what the labels, the social labels are. I just want to know because I think that one of the incredible joys of being a human being is that this experience called life is an incredible gift to really transcend a lot of things that we might have been born with. And now we have the opportunity to explore them, go beyond them, and really bring a lot of light into our lives. But what I was finding in that journey is that I was not being able to connect with my woman who is just like the women in this community or the men who are in that path as well. And I felt completely lagging when it came to that degree of connection. You know, Sex could have been great in multiple locations through the years, moments of joy and traveling, they could be fantastic. But then when you really start to take away that the peaks that happen in life, and then you have to go and meet one another on a daily living, I was falling short and not feeling that I was meeting her. And clearly she was expressing to me that I was not meeting myself. So now that started to really irritate and bother me and annoy me. And for the past 25 years, Bernadette, I, I have done pretty much everybody's courses out there, right? I mean, I've done a lot and I, I say this very candidly, I have invested independent of my wife, Kim, or with her together, deep into the six figures in US dollars over the past so many years. You know, I, I know what it is to go to the very uh, high investment retreats with people catering to us, going to people's courses. And for me as a man, independent of her experience, and very often she would come out completely elated and satisfied and fulfilled, 
for me, the experience was very different. I was not feeling fulfilled to the same degree. I did not really experience tremendous breakthroughs that were sustainable. On top of that, I would come out feeling unmet and not understood by the organizations or the individuals providing the experience, even if they were extremely committed. So I'm not really faulting them. But I think that there is something to be said when you have a particular set of conditions of who you are and whoever you engage may not necessarily be understanding what is it that makes you tick. And as I look in a very clinical way, if you will, with my medical background, and, and then taking into account all the years that I've had in the personal development industry, when Kim and I founded the Thrive Doctors and we had our own masterminds and we had our own show in, in, in radio, we went all over the United States to the major TV stations talking about mind body medicine. I, we did a lot of stuff. And I'm like, I have not been able to find who is it out there that really can understand what I talk about the alpha male, when I talk about the man who is a leader, the man who is a heterosexual guy who whose main vein of attraction is the females. And it's, very, it's a man who is very successful in pretty much every domain of his life. And now you put that man in the context of relationships, intimate relationships, and either he's not succeeding there or maybe he has succeeded in getting married, but the marriage is actually not very functional or is a disaster. Maybe that man is the kind of guy who uh, was married at some point, maybe no children, maybe with children and divorced. And in the, in, the, in the tape recorder of that man's mind is the question, why is it that despite my interest to have a successful and meaningful, fulfilling, intimate relationship, I continue to be pretty much skating on the same patch of ice and I'm going nowhere. And the more that I started to open myself to that conversation and, and be sincere with myself and what I was experiencing, I said, you know what? I'm going to have to start talking to other men about this because every time that I would demand get together, everything is great. We're talking about sports. We're talking about, oh, the kids are doing great, all of this and that. But I know because I could feel it in my body, these conversations are really superficial. So very often I would start by saying, you know what? I am not doing great in my marriage. Is anybody in the same boat here? And then basically the eyes would go really wide open, right? Because women typically, they can actually venture into these conversations and they get all this massive support, thank goodness. And we as men, it's like, oh, I'm not gonna talk about that because guess what? The guy who's a successful guy doesn't want to admit to the fact that something in his, in his experience of himself may actually be a failure. Right? right. Yeah. I started to do that experiment over the past almost 20 years, I would get the kind of answers that we're talking about, which is, yeah, we're having this kind of problems. I'm not having great sex. Or, you know, something escalates in the house and we just cannot connect. And then it takes three or four days before, before we can rekindle. Or she's getting, and then the man talks, she's getting cold on, on me. I don't understand it. You know what? It must be that they're all hormonal and they're all crazy, right? Which is such a common way to talk, for men to talk about women, especially the alpha guy. And I'm here to share with the community, I don't subscribe to any of that through the journey and what I'm going to be sharing about the, the, the life partner experience. And so all of that was a huge catalyst for me. And I want to share a really interesting experience. And I, I talk about this in the course. When I was growing up and I, I was born in Puerto Rico, as I mentioned earlier, um, I was about 11 or 12 years old. And we had, you know, my parents had some friends in the neighborhood and so on, and they knew the kids, etc. And I was typically growing up a very precocious sort of kid and, and uh, kind of more mature than the average, you know, adolescent. And that's, that was kind of the way I was. I was a bit of an old man in a young body so to speak. And this couple who lived in the neighborhood, he was a doctor and she was a housemaker. Uh, they came to my parents, the, the woman did actually. And she asked if they could borrow me and take me to their household because they wanted to talk to me about some things that, that they thought that maybe I could actually help them with. And my parents were like, well, you know, I don't know what the extent of the conversation was, but the end result was that they allowed me to go to their house. And it was a weekday, and I remember it must have been like 6 30, 7 p.m. in the evening. Sun was already down. They take me to the house, and we go to the basement of the house. 
and here we are. They put two chairs across from me, and I'm over here. Imagine that. And then they start talking, and then they start talking about their problems with their marriage. And she starts talking about we haven't been able to have intimate relationships and this and that. Here I am, 11 or 12 years old, listening to all of this stuff. Mind-blowing for that age. And it was something really remarkable happened. I'm 49 years old, and I have not for on this in you know over 30, almost 40 years. And it was the following. As the woman was saying all these things, and she was actually a very polite woman. She was Mexican, and she was talking about all these things and talking about him and how he was being. His face was like, like deer in a headlight, out of control. He could not believe for his life what he was hearing. And that gave me, at the age of 11 or 12, a huge insight that I never forgot. And it came into being now 30 plus something years later. There is a huge disconnect in the way that men and women communicate. And some people in the audience may be saying like, okay, doctor, you know, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to understand that. And I would have to agree with whoever is thinking that in this as they hear us talk. But the thing is, if that's not rocket science, why is it that it continues to happen in 20? Yes. Before. Yes. And if it was that simple, or if it was that evident to everybody, why is it that men, we have been so clueless about this, and women are suffering from the cluelessness that we're contributing to our relationship, independent of the fact that we, in our, in our hearts, do not want to inflict that kind of pain upon you, females. So... So if it's not rocket science, why is it that this is happening? So this had haunted me for many decades. And then my, my marriage and my trajectory in the mind-body medicine space and in the expert industry and the coaching industry really started to put a lot more pressure into why is this happening? And why if me, Mario, if I have gone to so many people's experiences and they're really committed to their work and they do beautiful work, many of these people I've worked with, why is it that this is not being nailed? So that to me was really the crucible where everything was happening to start really deepening into this and then figuring out, okay, there is what I call the critical missing link. And it continues to be out there. And what I came to understand which I, I want to share with you today, with all of you, is the following. Men, by virtue of our evolutionary road, our trajectory chronologically, you know, by best of estimates, it is said that Homo sapiens sapiens, who we are currently, has been around in this form of maybe, maybe 300,000 years. And human beings, millions, but as we know ourselves now. There were very clear distinctions by best of, of you know, the, the historians and the anthropologists accounts that we know, the kind of activities that us men would engage were very different from the ones that the females would. You know, we were chasing lions or running away from them or bears or whatever the case was, as women were taking care of everybody back home in the, in the clan, in the tribe, in the village. We were basically in the wild. And I like to say that perhaps the most emotional moment that us men could have had if we were to envision that moment would be high-fiving if they were doing that back then because maybe they just got this big game, right? They just they just hunt the big animal. It's like, yes, we're going to bring something back to the tribe to feed everybody. Or I got something chasing me and you took care of it and now that's dead and I'm alive because you actually saved my butt, right? So that could have been perhaps the greatest sense of joy in that sense, or if tribes were having, you know, quarries between between each other and, and somebody won over the other one, that might have been a sense of celebration for the men. On the other hand, women that are taking care of the family, taking care of the children, taking care of one another, going through whatever the, the situations of life that might have been happening for that uh, prehistoric woman, they had a different kind of bonding. They had a kind of a, a very different experience of connecting with one another. We didn't have that. 
But now fast forward, you know, 300,000 years to this day, you know, that we're doing this, this uh, communication, this conversation. Well, a lot has changed, but unfortunately, a lot hasn't. And that critical link that I'm talking about, that missing piece, is that women, as they are in this ascension path and development path, they're ever more connected with their feeling bodies. They're more connected with their emotions, with their feelings. Men, on the other hand, we didn't really learn to have that language. And that language could be a, just a speaking English or Spanish or Chinese. It's a very specific language. And it's a very important language that we have not been passed on to by our parents, our fathers, that is, grandfathers, and so on. So if, if I, as a man, love a woman, and I want to have a very meaningful, satisfying, enhancing journey with her, and she is definitely committed like your women in this community are, guess what? If the man is not understanding and supported to be able to have that missing link and access to it, that language of emotions, I can guarantee you consistently that if that foundational piece is not available, it will be very difficult for the woman to ever feel satisfied and she'll live a life of pretending that she's happy. And that degree of pretending happiness is equated to resigning herself to the fact that she can really have what she wants. And that could be a man who really gets her having sexual relationships where she can really orgasm and be completely connected with that individual, that human being that is sharing that very, very special and spiritual and, and etheric moment, right? So if that is not there, it's going to be going away and it's going to drift away, right? Because when we start meeting people, there may be the physical attraction initially, there may be some other things, as that is just practiced over and over and there's nothing else to the equation, it becomes very, very banal and very quickly it just goes away. And then we are doing everything we can to fulfill the void by busying ourselves to whatever life can bring us. And now we're just drifting in the boat of life, completely devoid of the pleasure, of the joy, of the spiritual connection, of the fulfillment that only Somebody in a relationship can have the other partner bring to them, you see? And that is a, a part that if we don't really take care of this, I think that we're going to see more people divorcing. We're going to see more people sick. And I, I'll just have a little medical parenthesis, if I may. As a physician and somebody who has been involved in the mind-body medicine space, I have seen so many things that it would take hours for us to share in this interview, Bernadette, of how this emotional disconnection, spiritual disconnection, this lack of living in your purpose, which I think is it's one of the things that you talk the most and serve your community the most with, it's so eroding of your essence and of your spiritual energy, which is such a powerful thing that I have seen how people get sick. And I want to add something that is amazing, that has fueled this passion of mine for a life partner. When I was at, at Harvard, I was a, a doctor at Mass General Hospital, which is one of the most prominent hospitals here in the United States and in the world. We call it the United Nations uh, of, of hospitals. Um, there is a building at Mass General Hospital called the Phillips House. And the Phillips House has a couple of floors in the very top level, which are uh, floors 20th through 22nd. And th those are the VIP floors. They have like double security and so on. They would sometimes change the names of the individuals so that nobody knew that royalty was actually over there. And so you can imagine. And I had the opportunity for the multiple years that I was there to operate in many of these people. And I would have to go and, and visit them and round on them in the mornings before I started my day. And as I deepened my connection with some of these patients over the years, something was always a constant, no matter what the creed, color, heritage, it didn't matter. At the end of the day, they wanted to have me do one thing, to buy them time through the surgeries to do one thing only, 
And that was to be able to express to those they love that they love them and spend every single minute with them. And the other side of that, to be able to reconnect with those that for whatever reason, they had neglected their relationship and they felt compelled to somehow figure out a way to reconnect before they died. Profound. Why? Because if we bring that context to this conversation into my work in a life partner, the most meaningful things that we can ever have in life is the richness of the experiences that we go through by virtue of spending time and interacting and giving and gifting ourselves to others and being open to receive the gift of others into our lives. So if we take that premise, which is, you know, really from my heart, then it's not very difficult to understand that I am on a quest for men to be able to gain access to bypassing and, and gaining a new language, which is this language of emotions and feelings, to be able to connect with the most significant relationship in their lives outside of the me with me, which in the case of a heterosexual couple is the man and the woman. And what I have discovered along the way in doing that is that independent of how great somebody, a man may be, independent of being with anybody, his greatness gets exponentially enhanced when he's well-partnered. And what I mean by well-partnered is emotionally, spiritually, energetic, energetically connected. You see, my biggest breakthroughs in my life, Mario, have been experienced when I have been able to humble myself in front of my woman to receive the gifts of being the immaculate mirror that she can be for me, that I am incapable of manufacturing for myself. And that changes the entire game. But it would not be possible to, it would be like somebody gives you a, a treasure chest and says, Bernadette, there's billions of dollars worth of gold coins and jewelry and all of that. But it's made out of a metal that there's no way, not even a laser can go through and the only way to open it is to have this key. And that key only comes out of you when you connect with your woman. <laughs> so now the guy is like, yeah, whatever. You know, I'm just going to throw the thing around. I know I can break it. And no matter how much energy you spend trying to do this, I'm banging your head, proverbially speaking, against the wall. And then you realize one day that the surrendering and the serenity that comes from finding the way to communicate and to listen to yourself as a man, suddenly manufactures a key out of nowhere and the thing opens up transiently. Mm. As you go back into your old ways, it just shuts down like that and you can't put your hands yeah. in. Um, so I, I hope that this has given at least of an introduction to this journey uh, because it is crucial. And people have asked me now that we're in the process of offering be a life partner for the first time ever. Um, people have asked me, women in particular, is this something that is for women? And we'll get into the specifics of this and so on. Mm -hmm. And and I said, well, you know, the secret is that the common element is that we are human beings, right? And when when you know, and I think that you'll be able to speak to this even more compellingly than I can as a man, since you're a woman and you've actually gone through the course uh, to speak about that. Because, like I said, it's not about the courses. How do we, in this ascension path, in this commitment to our spiritual growth and maturity, uh, how do we understand that the common element to everything we do in the world is basically humanity? And to prove that point further, um, and maybe you'll have some doctors in the audience as part of your community, I say to myself, if everybody had the opportunity to open the body, slice it, you know, you know, grotesquely speaking, the way that I have been able to, you'll discover that everybody in the inside is identical. We're all the same, identical. So this, this dress that we haven't dealt with upon birth, with color being blonde or black or this and that, it's, it's just like leaves on a tree in nature. It's just a forest. But the makeup is, is essentially identical. 
And mm, uh, love that. So yeah, when we understand that and we have lived it, and even if you haven't, in listening to this, I think it's just enough to have the awareness to understand that at a very core level, not from here, but from your whole body, having the, the knowledge, then you realize, okay, what we're talking about here plays a, a, an incredible role for both men and women. Now, Indeed. I want to add something to that on the on the female side, because, um, you know, I've been asked, well, but if it's a course for, for men, you know, and this experience of the alive partner, you know, it's being geared towards the men that you're talking about, like, how then, how does a woman really have any, any say or any play in this game, right? And my answer has been unequivocally a far greater degree of participation than the man does, right? When our children, I have two children and my youngest is six years old, you know, my, my son Gianni. Mm-hmm. And children are notorious for throwing tantrums. We all know that. Well, what does the adult do? The adult says, oh, he's just having a tantrum. And it's going to pass, right? Well, it's no it's no different from adults. And the woman, if she has the knowledge that the man doesn't have, and there's this inequality in terms of the paths that we have been on, even if we're living together, right? Well, she knows, if she knows that, and she really keeps it in her mind and her soul, then she realizes that she can be the agent of change and influence for that man to be opened up in many ways. And I can't tell you how many times I have experienced that in my life as a married man with my wife, Kim, where my stubbornness has gotten in the way and her persistence to love has been such that I have no choice but to succumb to give to the invitation. I think this is the opening for a lot of women listening because where you said, you know, like the woman can be an agent for change. There's a lot of women in my community that have got relationships where they feel they can't connect emotionally. They're not understood. They have run out of answers. They've tried to invite the person, you know, their partner to grow with them. Um, The partner is either not interested in growing with them or doesn't understand it. Or also, if we just think about what that's like for the man, is that is like something's wrong with you. Would you change? That's how it feels. It doesn't matter. Women, doesn't matter how you say it. (laughs) You're going to say that to a guy. He's going to feel something's wrong with me. That can create for men a lot of feeling of kind of shame, frustration, irritation, shut down. There's a lot of things that go on. So when you talk about, you know, for the women, for this alive partner work, which you do is around how to create conscious, um, intimate, connected relationships and emotional connection for men, like for men to be embodied and connected with themselves so they can connect with their partner, that the woman listening that might feel apathy, they're resigned to, that's never going to happen, you don't understand my partner is never going to listen to that, There's they don't get my spirituality, they don't get me, like it's too far gone, that there is an opportunity to be an agent for change. And I just want to say as an aside, um, with humility, that in my relationship it's actually the opposite. So the I am the stubborn one, I am in the masculine, Aaron is the invitation constantly with loving resilience <laughs> to have opened me up. So it's not always this way around and I always and I you and I have talked about this that it's very important for men to understand that women on a path that might be you know spiritual and creating change and they're growing and you find that confronting or a woman listening your man finds that confronting or frustrating it's not that there's like an inequality of superiority or inferiority they're just different it's just different and for a lot of guys and you know, like that you speak to with this material is they're not like guys that want to go and do all the courses. Like that they're, they're not like I'm not on like I'm not a off on a spiritual path. I'm married to someone who's growing and I can't connect and I don't know about this whole emotion stuff. And it's all very weird and I feel uncomfortable, but also I don't want my marriage to be broken. And I want to create connection. And I that's why I loved what you've created is because it's just very like welcome guys. This is not trying to fix you. You've got your life working, but relationships are this kind of weird, funky area that aren't working. And you don't want to go to a therapist and you don't want to have to sit and have these conversations with a woman coach who doesn't understand that you're, <laughs> how you function as a guy. And, you know, before 
you know, you and I got to catch up in person, which was amazing. And before we even met in person and before we'd even had this conversation that you were even doing this work, um, the interesting synchronicity was Aaron and I, my husband, who some of you know and some of you don't, had had a conversation about where is the work in the world for the, for the guys that are blokey guys. You don't want to be emasculated. You don't want to be like something's wrong with you. Nothing's wrong. There's nothing wrong. So it's like, where is the space to be a guy, to be a strong masculine guy, to not be told something's wrong with you, to not have to go all spiritual because you're not, and just to be like, you know, where is that space to be with someone that gets you, understand you, and will guide you so that you can have a deeper connection, right? And that's what I feel like your work is about. Like, it's actually from a spiritual person's point of view and a female's point of view, it's very spiritually on point. There's not a single vein of spiritually, like you're not talking a spiritual language. You're talking a very straight down the middle, scientific, embodied, conscious, mindful understanding of how men function. And I think that's what was interesting as a woman listening to it was like, I was, I think I said to you, right? I was like, I got a better understanding of men yes. by listening to your course. Yeah. You know, thank you. That That's beautifully said. And you're on point 100%. I want to say a few things to to that and react to that because uh, you, you're a hundred percent spot on. Let's talk a little bit about I talk about the alpha and the omega energies in in the course, and that may be a new subject for some, maybe not for some others. Um, there is a the alpha term utilized for this kind of like super macho sort of guy kind of like almost like the epitome of chauvinism, if you will, you know, and everybody working out in the gym and who's got, you know, who put more, more testosterone, you know, testosterone in their, in their, in their injection than, than the other one. No, in, in this concept is really, it's kind of interesting because I was able to smuggle a little bit of spirituality into the conversation for this man, right? Without, like you said, this is not a spiritual course, this is not religious, nothing like that. And, and, and why is that? And I'll go back in a second to Alpha and Omega. Because this leader man, this alpha male who sees, sees himself as a successful guy, I'm taking care of my woman. I'm taking care of my family. I'm going to go out there and make it happen. That's kind of what he's, you know, his drivers, right? Protecting my clan that I've created with her. That guy does not like to be put in a situation where he's confronted with his inadequacies. What he perceives as his inadequacies, or he, if he doesn't perceive them, he doesn't want to have anything coming in that may actually spark the discomfort of him starting to assess himself only to arrive at the conclusion, 100%, that... I don't want to look in that direction. No man, for example, wants to hear that he's not pleasing his woman, no matter how, how big his penis is, right? Because it's emasculating for us to think that we cannot, something that is so core for a hetero man, which is to be able to have a woman come and have an orgasm. If the guy is actually not doing that, I don't want to talk about that. It, it's kind of like the same thing of talking about erectile dysfunction, right? It's like, we don't want to go in that direction, but many men have it, right? It's 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 known, but nobody wants to talk about it in an open forum because it's it, it's equated to masculinity, right? So if you have a woman who is telling you whatever she's saying to you, it's not gonna land well. And that's thing to you, let's say from you know, some of the, the community members that have done all this work, hey honey. I came across this book the other day. I think you should read it because it's going to help you a lot. Okay, right there. This guy is checked out. Sorry, ain't happening. Why? Because right there, the woman to him is coming with an air of superiority. And what happens, and, and I can actually, you and I have talked about this, and it's not intended. I know that. You know, many of, of my wife's uh, community members uh, have some common elements with some of your community members. And, and so I feel very 
uh, in tune with with that kind of woman. I'm married to one of them. Um, and but what happens is I have also noticed that in the perception of the man, and I'm not saying that the women intend this, it can sometimes land very harshly or arrogantly when the woman is making suggestions, even though in the in the goodness of her heart, all she wants to do is to experience this man more developed and more advanced so that she can actually open more and give more to him. So I understand from where I'm standing with all of these things that I have done for almost three decades, I understand the woman and I understand where that's coming from. But the perspective that I have gained to understand her and see the men on the other side who don't has allowed me to then figure out, okay, how do we bridge that gap? You see, one of the things that I have done in the course, and let me go back to the alpha and the omega, the alpha as I, as I employ it in this sense, is basically the being the container, being the seer, being the stillness. Another image that we could uh, invoke to understand this is think of a river. The riverbed is the alpha energy and the water rushing down with whatever it's coming through and all its, all its uh, tempestuous energy is the omega energy. Now, you were saying something brilliant earlier, which is absolutely true. Say, well, you know, I, I, I see myself more in a more of an alpha sort of energy and Aaron more in that invitation sort of energy, which is more of an omega sort of energy. But what is fascinating and I introduce in the course is the fact that all of us have a duality when it comes to this thing of understanding alpha and omega. The woman is gonna be the feeler. I said he was the seer. The woman is gonna be the one that is gonna be in motion. The woman is gonna be the one that is kind of manifesting. And that man, that alpha energy is witnessing all that energetic dance that is brought about by that omega energy. What I bring to the course is I start to explain that there is what I call the alpha omega spectrum. What does that mean? Well, if you're a human being, last time I checked, a man and a woman had to contribute something for that to happen. Whether it was through insemination or if it was actually naturally by two people coming together. And there's a contribution of an egg and a sperm to actually make this incredible creation we call humans. So by default, there is already a contribution of both energies that are our makeup. And one of the things that I make very clear to the men, that doesn't mean that you have to wear heels and skirts because obviously this guy doesn't care for any of that. But it is essential to consider, which is one of my favorite ways to approach any topic when I present something different, the following. If in fact there is omega in you, which we identify with this expression of emotions and this outburst that many men fear and are so uncomfortable with when they experience the female partner having them, what would that feel like or be um, adopted as if you were to consider that your makeup is identical to hers in that sense, at least in the potential to be able to manifest yourself similarly? When you plant that seed, the man immediately kind of, and I've seen it from, from the experience of people going through the course, they take a step back. Are you telling me that I that, that I, I can be like that? Yes. And I'll prove this point. When I started coaching years ago, and now under the Alive Partner Mentorship that I have, the first session with any man that comes in, and I like to do a check-in in the beginning just to see how things are going and this and that. Well, the typical check-in of a man would be something like, well, you know, you know, it was a busy day at work and I had some things to deal with and this and that. I had to fire somebody and uh, I had a good lunch today. You know, I just had some burger and fries and it was a good day. The check-in is done. Two, three, four se sessions in. Now the check-in is half an hour long. And what's happening? 
What's happening is that that man who never had the experience to be able to be in his omega is hugging it like a tree on a riverbed as the water is rushing down. So you're holding on to dear life because we have been swallowing all sorts of emotions and we have not been able to channel them. We have not been able to feel them. We have not been able to gift them to our partners, not in anger, not in, I'm going to beat you. No, in like, this is coming up for me. I can't tell you, Bernadette, how many times I do my practice with my wife. I meditate by myself every day and then we do some combined meditation. I can't tell you how many times suddenly out of nowhere I'm crying. And I realize it's like, wow, it's like, this is like thousands of years, millions of years that are just allowing, being allowed to be released. And when it happens, it's, it's just such a, such a magical moment to be able to experience the tears coming down my, my cheeks. In the beginning, I would start saying to my wife, oh, I think I'm going to cry. I feel like I'm, I feel I'm crying. It would irritate the shit out of her. That's what, because it, it didn't land as genuine. It was like, I'm trying to show that I'm emoting. Mm. Right? Also like the organic nature of being able to feel. And when those men, after we talk about the alpha omega spectrum, and they start to understand that there's, in some cases, the alpha male has more omega than alpha, that kind of really challenges the equation, right? Because there are some men that are really powerful that are very, very emotional men. Yeah. Yell that this, this, they're all over the place. That's a very omega man, even though he could be the pounder, but they don't know it, right? Mm. So the woman has such a capacity to unleash the omega in the man. So there's two big components here. One is I talk about and I teach about how to have the language of emotions. But the other, the other piece is the woman is such a key player to be able to be in her alpha and be a container for him to be able to start unleashing his emotions. So when women, like in your community, it's like, I've had it with my man. I, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm going to divorce this guy. This guy doesn't feel anything. This guy doesn't say anything, right? The woman is unaware that she is in her uh, omega state all the time. And she wants him to be alpha for her to have her omega. But that is enveloped in a very hard shell of alpha, her. Because she's being hardened by the fact that she has not been able to experience him in his, uh, in his alpha for her to be able to just like melt in her omega. And when that happens, what does a woman do? The woman loses trust in her mate. I need to protect myself in this relationship. I need to take care of myself. She becomes a CEO in the household. CEO is a very alpha state. It's very difficult to actually have a man be attracted to, to basically a CEO. He wants a woman who's tender, who's soft, who's sensual, who can dance, you know, we can really and get all the women and all the women are thinking, and I ain't gonna do that because it's he's not getting it. So if he thinks I'm gonna go and be the soft river and the sensual, ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, honey, that ain't happening, right? Because and so what we have is withdrawal, request, request change, not changing. This one saying that be tender, be the woman, like open up to me. Let's have physical intimacy. I don't think so. That's not going to happen. You're not emotionally meeting me, but I need to have physical because this is what I need. But you're not meeting emotion. And now we've got stalemate. And I remember you saying, I wrote it down. You remember you saying you need to stop seeing your relationship as a battlefield. Yes. And 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 it's like, but I can't let my walls down because because I'm not getting emotionally met, and I'm not let I'm not going to do this emotional thing because oh, that's uncomfortable and that's weird, and and I'm feeling judged and I'm feeling shame because I'm not meeting you, and it's like it just becomes this oh it's chaos. And from a spiritual point of view, we are in the predominant major relationships in our life. We are in soul agreements. We are not with the people we're with. 
for no reason. And that doesn't mean we stay in unhealthy relationships that are toxic or abusive. It means that where we are and where we stand is not by mistake. And I love A Course in Miracles says something to the effect of relationships like a maximal opportunity for growth, meaning you're going to push their buttons and they're going to push your buttons. And there's meant to be this opportunity for immense evolution. And I know that you know, probably know this in your relationship. I know in mine is that that person in the other room is the primary reason that I have evolved to the place I've been able to and had and, and I'm even doing able to do any of the stuff that I'm doing in the world because there was like this constant mirroring and opportunity for growth and so there and there's there is always hope there was always hope but I always also say to the women like I was coaching I like aside from the community group there's also I do one-on-one -on -one with people and I always say to people, you're like, oh, he's not this and it's not that and he's not listening. It's like, okay, but you know, like we like you can't you can't change a person. They have to willingly come to the table. Another reason you're not going to drag them to a course. They have to willingly want to evolve. And you have to be an energetic invitation for that. Because if you are in judgment, there ain't no man's gonna come and do a course with you if you're in a judgment, right? But you want it, but but you're so pained about the thing that you're in judgment. So there, so the woman has to do the work. So while your guys over there in the course are doing the work, the woman has to do the work, which is like you have to come into non-judgment. You have to see this person from where they are. And in their shoes, they're like, I'm an alpha real. I have every other area of my life working and I don't understand you at all. Yeah. And I wish I could, but I do not understand you. And I think that's where your work is really beautiful because as much as we've deeply gone into alpha and omega and all these interesting and fascinating things, the work inside the course is just is very like completely logical and scientific and like really easily applied and really simple exercises that immediately create shifts, which is really cool, right? And for for women, you have to remember that for a lot of men and particularly the men that will suit your courses like this whole feeling emotion thing it's like weird for some guys like they, they're not they're not even like feeling not even in their bodies like they don't there's just and for women it's so natural it's like why doesn't he get it it's like you can't expect a fish to climb a tree Yes. Like with you, you know, like you've got there's got to be some grace around. You've got a person who's been raised in a culture and a society where they are basically taught to be a certain way, and then you're asking them to be different, and they are wired for it, but there needs help. And I think this, I think the biggest thing is, is like you said, Winnie, here's a book. I really think you should read it. That sounds like stop coaching me and telling me what to do with your damn spiritual stuff over there. Yes. <laughs> Ask me how I know. I mean, I, I was a receiver of that as much as I inflicted on my partner for many years. And that's why, and, and you can speak to this because you've done the course. That's why to me, it was so important to be really present to the needs of this man, to be really mindful that this, you know, one of the, the, the challenges that I see in certain parts of the industry is such an esoteric slant is given to things to make them sound like they're just that out of this world. But you know what's really out of this world? To be able to kiss my wife and feel her that she really received me. Or for her to out of nowhere come and kiss me and give me a hug. I didn't need anything esoteric, nor did I need to climb Everest to do that, proverbially speaking. I, I've climbed Everest a few times over my lifetime as a married man for all these problems. And I have come down, of the mount, down the mountain very mangled many times, licking my wounds. So like, how do I deal with this? Yeah. You know, so as, as I put this together, I'm like, I'm going to take everything that I have learned. And then there was a, a tremendous, you know, kind of like magic dust of my own meditation journey and, and, and all of that and my spiritual journey that really assisted me in making something really concrete and not really go into the spiritual side of things, understanding that, you know, you have to meet people where they're at. Mm. It's not like, oh, I have this incredible thing, come and do it and you'll be better off. No, I think that's really arrogant. And in, and you went through the course and you know that if anything, this completely elevates women, you know, because mm. very yeah. kind of gender specific 
trainings or courses or experiences, but they kind of put down the other. I that doesn't that creates more separation. Oh, it's very beautiful. It's really about sacred holy union of two beings and being embodied. And I don't know if you want me to share the five things that I noticed from, you know, we talked about it, five things I'd noticed, because I think it's kind of interesting, um, you know, and in, in with this 20 year anniversary tomorrow, I am really grateful that that there are certain things about the person that I am spending my life with that he has organically and naturally been and come to in his own journey of awareness. He's a really conscious man and that he has been able to be. And those are absolutely vital to us being able to have a sacred and wholly beautiful relationship. That um, going through your course, I was like, oh, the same things because the five things as I went through I was like what is the essence of this that Mario has brought that I can see because I'm really analytical so I'm very about frameworks so I'm looking at I'm like what is the body of that like if I was to put this into I was like oh my gosh this like these are the same things that I really appreciate about my husband and um that has allowed connection and allowed me to soften because like and in our community we talk about masculine and feminine energy not male and female divine masculine divine feminine the masculine being the very kind of doing action logical mind the feminine being the softer the emotional the receptive the openness and for you know for a lot of women in and in modern society there is a need to drop the masculine and come back into their feminine because it's been lost and that's definitely been the case for me but back to these five things here is what i came up with and 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 for men listening, these things are magnetic. These things, women love these things, okay? And this is, and I really see how you guide men in this program to these five things. So the first thing was being heart-centered. Yes. And what I love is you can be a totally blokey man and so in your manliness and be totally heart-centered and that is super hot. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> the second thing is being embodied physically, and I don't really know how to describe that other than you are really like in your physicality, in your energy, grounded. And you can feel it when you're with someone that is like that. It feels very safe is how I would describe it. Well, you know, um, the third... Just if I may, just as, a, as an add-on to that for the audience, a way that I think of that in my course and my own experience, and I'm just going to say it how it is, is the man being in his balls is a man yep. being, being in his, another way to put it, not so colloquially would be to be in your pelvic chakra. Yep. To be yep. In, your, in your root chakra. And I don't like to use that word. I didn't use it in the course per se and going through that because that may be a little esoteric. So mm -hmm. I kept talking about going into your pelvis, basically in, in seeing the pelvis or, or envisioning the pelvis as an anchoring platform. I'm just going to hold onto my pelvis, onto my hip bones. I'm down there. That yeah. allows you to really anchor yourself as opposed to being from here and operating from here. Yeah. It would be like saying, hey, Bernadette, how are you doing? What are you doing? Good to see you. Hey, Bernadette, how are you? I'm here. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, yeah, exactly. That voice very high, but we can all also have a grounding voice. And it's finding Perfect. that. And that's Perfect. how I want you to explain it to this man who is unaware of of the masculine and feminine energies and this and that and chakras. No, forget about that. Let's just be regular people. And yeah, I love that. Put that to them, you know. But the women in your community who understand this, by being able to have that image that I've just given, they can speak to that and and see that in their men and and bring it to their attention or or it allows them to to feel where mm -hmm. is he? Is in his chest? Is in his pelvis? In his masculinity? And that is that sense of grounding that you're talking about. Yes, it's very hard because it's a sense of protection. Yeah, he's got hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. And you don't feel that if it's just all up in here and you energy. You don't know it logically, but it's an energetic thing. It's just an energetic thing. It's very hard to describe. On a side note to that, before I give you the other three things, is that um, we've also talked about this. Is that my sense from doing this work for what's nearly fourteen years that I've been deep diving on this is that a lot of women, in my experience, 
in this work that I do, and maybe it's just the women that end up with me, I'm not sure, um, that there are a lot of women, particularly in the 40 to kind of 80 age range, that are on a spiritual path, that are very emotionally connected and are very about their spirituality, that are very divorced from their physicality, their sexuality, their openness in that realm of their life with their planet. Yes. And 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 to be like that's work for them to be doing as well as for the man to be getting down into the body. Because yes. a lot of people just get they they get out of their body. They're up in their mind and they're not like and particularly like with religious and faith backgrounds where you've been indoctrinated that there's something about this beautiful like physical being that is not beautiful and so there's a shutting down of that kind of stuff and I love that you address that from for the men in that alive partner course that's really beautiful um if I if I may add to that because you're just saying like diamonds are coming out of you as you say that um I want to speak, if I may, to to some of these ladies that feel that way. Um, and, and some of you who feel that way might have developed a sense of becoming this way because the man that is with you did not really understand you the way that you want to be understood, did not hold you the way that you need to be held, did not allow the way that your energy and everything running through you, which is beautiful, needed to be held and allowed in such way. So I, I I have deep compassion for that. And I mean it because I have been your man in some instances. I have been the offender in many cases, in many situations where I have produced the same results in my wife, in my in my beloved partner, in my divine partner, as I call Kimberly. And one of the things that I speak about in the course, and it really comes from a very deep place of experience and sorrow and discomfort and sadness and um, shame and embarrassment that I've experienced because of my behavior, um, is the fact that this body that we have been in doubt with upon being uh, born and still being alive here is is the most sophisticated, I call it radar, that we know in the universe until perhaps we find life in a different planet and we get to communicate about what they feel. Until then, I really believe with all my medical knowledge and all my, my spiritual journey and so on, that this is such a gift to have this. I have goosebumps as I'm saying this because it's bringing awareness to my feeling body. And, and to not be able to resource yourselves especially if you're aware that you have neglected or dampened your feeling body it's almost like somebody coming to you to say i'll give you the keys to heaven and you can go right now and you say nope i don't want it right now yeah. you see so this feeling body that we have which i am committed to having men discover is also in you and to deny ourselves, whether you're a man or a woman, a feeling is almost to say, I might as well don't want to live. And I honor and respect that we all make decisions and we end up where we end up at. I completely get that and I honor it and I profound respect for our decisions and, and our autonomy. But what if, what if? Yeah. Just what if, yeah. In this conversation that we're having right now, we could invite the possibility in to start waking up this feeling body, whether I'm 80 years old and I can enjoy a feeling body until mm -hmm. the universe says it's time to go elsewhere for a different form of energy and, and a different mm -hmm. form of enjoyment, mm -hmm. or whether it's, you know, for decades on after listening to this. It's a it's a it's an invitation for your consideration. Um and I have to say, you know, as as strong and powerful as men are. I've always said that women are the most powerful you know, beings in the universe that I know because the transformations, as you were saying earlier, that I have experienced, that being here with Bernadette right now speaking to you about these topics would have not happened because the name of the chorus and the name of, of this concept is not a life single. Mm. It's a life partner. And if, if I am alive to this degree and death to share these insights for your consideration, 
is because of my sharing and me being gifted by my woman. Mm -hmm. She she has unlocked me and unleashed me many times. And I'm profoundly grateful to her. So imagine how much more is available to all of you who may feel locked down, shut down because of being with a man that doesn't get you. How much more is available to you in your spiritual journey of growth and experience? If perhaps after this conversation, we can say, you know what? It's worth considering. It's worth waking up the feeling body. It's not just for men. There are many women who actually are mirrors of the men. Mm -hmm. And why can't we support each other and one another to enhance our journey? And yeah. that's why you say that this is not just for men. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you very specifically how to get, how, uh, uh, there'll be women listening and they'll be going, how do I, how do I, so how do I get him? How do I get them to, to do the course? <laughs> so we're going to get to that in one second, but I'm just going to quickly share the last three things. Yes. Um, we had heart centered, embodied, present. Yes. Present. For listening. Yes. Not a skill set of mine, particularly excellently great husband listener. And the fifth one is not just emotional connection and embodied, but emotional processing. They're processing their feelings. Processing the feelings. Like I'm having the feeling, I've got to do something with it, right? Not shoving it down. Um anyway, let's get to the bit. Let's get to the juicy bit. The women are thinking, how do I get them to do the course? You know. <laughs> so so what is your response to that, please, please, yeah. as the man who's been there? My first response is everybody who's listening to this should be doing the course. That's number one. <laughs> and, and I and I, you know what, I, I, I'm not trying to be cheesy here, but the reason why I say that is because the wisdom in the woman unlocks the man that is actually this guy that I'm talking about, okay? And I know you want actually, what does that look like? And I, obviously I would tell you. This guy is so ridiculous, okay? The me, the Mario, we are ridiculous. So how does it work for us? Because you see, anything I do, has to come from the place that I'm leading, I'm protecting you, I'm taking care of you, I'm serving you. So anything that is not needing that, if I am talked in a way that allows me to discover that I am not fulfilling those things in my male nature, that will make me do something about it. Go like this or go like this? Exactly. So the way that we get there is it can be confrontational, and it cannot come from a place of he is less and he is not developed. Mm. The challenge here is for the woman in this case. Sorry to say that, but it's the truth. Why is that? Because unfortunately, my behavior as a man towards you has actually promoted or provoked a shutdown. In some cases, a tendency to create boundaries and layers around yourself that it's hard to penetrate. Mm -hmm. right? So now anything that she wants to suggest to him or for him to do is going to come with a patina of I'm pissed. I'm angry. I've had it. I'm upset. I'm up to here. I don't have an ounce of patience to deal with your shortcomings. How do I know? Because I've been that guy, guys. That's why I know it. So what works in that instance? We have to set the conditions. I was talking to somebody and giving this, this uh, metaphor. Imagine that somebody tells us, hey, there's going to be a baseball game. Bring your gear with you. And the woman, oh, it's a baseball game. She brings a bat, she brings the ball, she brings the glove, and she shows up to the baseball park. And, here and she's comes. probably got a picnic and some champagne. <laughs> right? What does the guy do? He shows up with a basketball. He's like, okay, buddy, did you get the memo? It's a, it's a baseball game. What is it that I'm trying to say? We have to set the conditions beforehand so that when the moment comes, the expectations have been agreed upon to do so. What does that look like in practical terms? Like this. The woman comes and said, hey, honey, 
I realize that over the past so many years or whatever, every time or most of the times, and I talk about the absolutes in the language in my course as well, every time, always, never, those are absolutely not in communication because they leave no opportunity. They close the doors forever, right? So I also talk about that in, in the Alive Partner course. Um, say, hey, honey, you know, many times we've had this disagreements and we have these arguments and this and that, and then that really doesn't end up well. And typically, most women, they live more in their omega than men, even though they may have a big alpha side. So we're, for the sake of this argument, we're assuming that the woman is more in her omega. So she's the crazy emotional one as he sees it because he doesn't have a language to describe her and he doesn't understand himself yet. So he can't even talk that language yet. He will eventually, I promise you, after he does a course. Hey, honey, you know, we have this situation. Um, I'm just going to ask for a big gift from you. You can say a favor, a gift, uh, a different way to do it with me. I recognize that I express my emotions the way that blah, blah, blah. I do it, et cetera, and it lands for you this way. We're going to do something a little different this time. All I want you to do, please, is to kindly just stay here with me. Look at me in the eyes as I'm communicating. No matter what I'm doing, stay with me. And do not add or say anything. Let me have it. Just let me have it. The guy is going to think this may be crazy, or he may think it's crazy and it's easy because I don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Just listen to me. Next time that something comes up, I'm just setting the stage here. We're discussing this. I want to have an agreement with you that next time that there's an argument or something challenging that we need to talk about, that that's what I would like to be gifted to me from you. Can we agree on that? Or explain that to me, you know, like, how am I going to do that? We may sit, or we may be in the kitchen, we may be standing. Just let me have it. If it comes across like I'm crazy to you, that I'm being emotional, that is, this is, doesn't make any sense. I am acknowledging right now before it happens that it may look that way for you. You're setting the stage to decrease the expectations so that he's kind of like, oh, she's she's doing what she said she would do. He's doing the thing. Mm -hmm. Doing the thing. Let me have it. Okay. That may be the first time in some of the community members here that have ever done that in their marriage and their relationship. Mm -hmm. Some may be married 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, whatever the case may be. But there was no conditions set for the game mm, i call them preemptive strategies yeah she showed up to play baseball he showed up to play basketball we got a problem here there's no game there's no game we need to be aligned independent of how it's going to play out that at least some basic foundational rules have been agreed upon agreements agreements not like rules not boundaries not you won't do this and you must do that just agreement like agreement exactly right? and then and then it's important for her to say by the way i want to let you know that just as you're doing this for me next time that you're going through something work related you're upset annoyed angry whatever i am going to do the same thing and let's just check out how it goes because I want to be able to experience from my end the gift that you're giving to me. And see Check out the language. Check out the language in that, people. Do you hear? He says, I want to be there for the gift you are giving me. Meaning you've got a partner who is expressing all this stuff oh, and it's coming at you. Yes, the gift of what you're giving me. You are being fully emotionally expressed in that moment. And yes. that is where you've previously been shut down. Yes. This isn't, this is an opening. This is what it looks like when it begins. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I want to share with the women in the community, there's nothing from where I'm standing that is more amazing 
than to see my wife emoting in her full spectrum. Because when that would happen in the past without me being where I'm at now, I would get very uncomfortable. And this is one of the reasons that men do not enjoy this. The reason why, so you ladies know this, and I hope that you do the course because it will give you a full deeper insight into the, into the, the feeling man is the following. Men in their alpha nature, one of the characteristics is being a fixer. A broken pipe, I'm running to the kitchen to fix that pipe and make it happen. The car, something is leaking. I got to get under the car and figure what that is. The alpha nature in our spiritual and energetic DNA is actually, and, and the physical DNA is to actually fix things. If you, in your emotional greatness and your feminine essence, you thrive in the full spectrum that the rainbow has to give, guess what? I only may like to just deal with the red and the rainbow and everything else blinds me and really irritates me and I can't look over there. Mm -hmm. So what's happening for that man is that as I witness your full spectrum going through and being shown and being displayed to me intentionally or unintentionally, it brings up a lot of discomfort for me because what is that doing for me? I am thinking that there's something wrong with you. Maybe I am the source of the wrongness that you're experiencing and I need to get rid of the situation yesterday to feel once again that I'm the man. Yeah, because I can't I, fix this and I don't understand this emotion thing. I don't know what is going on here right now, but you just need to like, can you just not be doing this? <laughs> the yes. you going in your crazy mode is brewing inside because this thing is way out of control. And then, honey, what, what can I do? Tell me, tell me. And what does that do to you? It pisses you off even more. Why? Because there has been like coitus interruptus. You are, the, the volcano is just coming through to release whatever is coming through. Bring all the minerals, all the gold, all the silver to the surface. And somebody's just taking the hand and going like this. Trying to fix it. Fix, fix, fix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really oppressive, suppressive, repressive in the experience of the woman. It's it's the opposite of what the feminine essence wants to do. Mm. But when we set the stage before the brain kicks in and the defense mechanisms and the reptilian brain wants to protect itself, there is an expectation. This would be like going to a movie and somebody saying to you, there's going to be bloody bath in this whole in this movie. So when the bullets are thrown around, they may startle you a little bit, but you already knew they were coming. So the way you rate the movie is not going to be, well, it was terrible. It's like, no, I, oh, it was actually, there's a lot of action in the movie. I was prepared it was like, for it. You are prepared for it. It was expected, but you, you saw the trailer. Somebody might have seen the movie and told you about it. Oh, it's this actor. He tends to be in the in the hardcore action movies. You already have an idea what's coming your way. You may be surprised. Mm -hmm. You're not 100% surprised. It's almost, you know, I call this neutralization in the course. Somebody, somebody may say desensitization. I'm not trying to desensitize the men. In fact, I'm actually trying to sensitize them. But in the course, eventually to neutralize it so that he can actually be in observance of himself to be able to give to you and not be startled by what's coming his way because he's already recognized and learned to recognize that it lives in himself too. Not shut down, but to be open, present and able to be with it without controlling the narrative, without being reactive to the emotions. I mean, all the kind of stuff that we see like fireworks and not a good way in relationships, right? That's what I love. It addresses that. It creates an ability to be with each other's stuff and hold space for it. I call it holding space. Hold space without being, like then making it about yourself, right? And being able to be there and be the witness to it. So good. Okay, so where do people need to go? We've got um, a beautiful video for them. Yes. That they can go and get. So can you tell us a little bit about that? It's going to be, it's an awesome free video. I've seen it. It's wonderful. Um, it's free. You can go and get that on Mario's website at alivepartner.com forward slash 
my name forward slash B Logue, L O G U E. So it's a livepartner.com forward slash B L O G U E. And we will have a link with the video for you to go and get that. So that video, tell me the topic. It's fun. Typically, yeah. it's the three ways to please your woman and make her have, a, you know, one more. Beautiful. And, Beautiful. And, it, and it, I really, um, and I have to, you know, in, in all disclosure, you know, in honest disclosure, I talked a lot about to uh, all of the things to my wife because obviously this is not solo work. This is really a team effort. And I think that that brings even more validity to the quality of the work in my in my opinion. So I have to give credit to my wife 100%. There wouldn't be an, a life partner if I wasn't in a marriage with her. So it's, once again, it's not a life single. It's a life partner. <laughs> um, but this video, I think it's critical because, you know, in the world of the internet, Bernie, that you know, there's so much stuff out there that is really not necessarily serving us, and um, and then people try to get you to look at their stuff and this and that. And you know what? If I'm going to put something, I really want to stand behind it, and I want to be able to do it concise so that anybody can actually engage it—a man, a woman, both together—and they'll be able to immediately start getting results from it. And I touch on three things that you know we've been touching about in a very concise way. One is basically. Uh, being a feeling being the second aspect is being a listening being and the third one is basically being a present being you know and i call that the the uh the feeling man uh listening man and then present man and but it's applicable to the woman because once again if we start off from the premise of the alpha and the omega energies i think we've already completely debunked the aspect that this is just for men you know the common yeah. element the common grounds is being human beings well, the interesting thing is, is those, those three things that the women can actually be using and applying themselves. But the other thing is, it puts language to what women want from their man that they don't even know that they want. They just know something doesn't feel right. I don't know what's going on here. I don't, like, no one taught me relationships when I'm growing up. How am I meant to know what he's meant to be doing? I just know it doesn't feel good. When you listen to it, you can apply the three things as a woman, but you also go, ah, oh, that's what I wanted to do. And I haven't been able to say what it is because I don't know. <laughs> right. So it's really, it's really beautiful. Yeah. I anybody to take the message. I was like, this is a course for men. I, I really encourage every single woman in your community that is in a relationship or single wanting to evolve as part of her journey to really understand that. I, 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 I believe, truly believe that single women, as much as single men, should be exposed to this. I had some millennials who were actually in the beta phase testing of the course before it started to be offered. You know, we opened the the offering to the general public yesterday. But before this, you know, we've been in the preparation for months and we had, you know, many people go through the experience from uh, men as young as 23, I want to say, and, you know, as old as probably close to 80 years old, um, for sure, 78, 79. And I have to say, and then women, obviously, too, um, I, I think everybody should be doing it because if the woman is the one who has the awareness and she starts to embark on getting this language herself, and one of the distinctions that I've made is the fact that you're women doesn't mean you know how to speak emotions. You're more emotional by your nature, but if you don't have the language, you, a, a, a person who's fully developed in that sense They'll know how to convey the emotions. And I, I want to give a, a little tip here, if I may, Bernadette, that I speak about in the course pertaining to speaking emotions. And it is what I call the three killer words in language of emotions or feelings. And it's important to catch ourselves. Um, people usually, when they're going to express feelings or emotions, we tend to say, I feel like. But when we do that, that's really not expressing emotion. That ends up typically being a judgment. It doesn't really convey what it is that I feel. If you truly want to be in a language of true feelings, it's two words. I feel blank. You fill the blank, F-I-L-L, -L, and you put a word. I feel elated. I feel happy. I feel excited. I feel annoyed. I feel angry. I feel dejected. I feel deflated. I feel empty. And so on. And I, I teach all this stuff in the course and how to resource ourselves to do that. 
that alone for women as you deal with other women, for women as you deal with your man, is a game changer. It brings a deep sense of awareness, of interrogating yourself, what is the feeling? When I started to transition into that, I would catch myself saying, I feel like, and then I would say whatever, and it would be like killing my wife every time. And, and it's would like, be- that feels like, like when you go, I feel like, it's sort of like you, you're immediately pointing out to something's going on, like a judgment. A strange, strange set of three words, but that is what it comes across as, right? Yeah, yeah. and it's so subtle. It's so subtle, but it's a massive shift in the way it's received. And I, yeah. I create that awareness. And then I would find myself, even to this day, if I actually go on the other side, I, I stop myself and I go, hold on, that's not a feeling. What is the feeling? Because that is my own triggering mechanism to remind myself, tune in, tune in. What what is this informing me of? Let me use this miraculous, incredible, you know, wonder of a tool that is my sensing and feeling body to inform me of what this situation is bringing up to me. And I want to also add to that, Bernadette, something really crucial. Many of these women in your community and Kim's community see more possibilities for their men in some cases than the men can see for themselves. Professionally, I'm speaking that. And the way they relate to other men, how they negotiate through life, business or interpersonal. And what I have found and the testimonials that we've had are amazing, is how this is changing the businesses of some of the business owners that have gone through the Alive Partner course because they're finding themselves making very different decisions. And not only that, and I talk about this in one of the videos, the capacity to tune in, it becomes an immunological response against the what I call the SOS or shiny object syndrome. Something seems to be pretty attractive to them. I got to do that because that's going to make me money. And let me go after that. And now you're rushing in that direction to do that, only to find that you were not really in your body. You were not really fully allowing the, the universal intelligence to be channeled through you, to guide you, which your women are very in tune and you teach them to do that and to be connected with purpose, right? And intention. But men... That, that don't know how to use their feeling bodies and don't have that journey and that development, don't. So if mm, they're gut- so it opens up this whole world of, of like inner communication for them that, of course, you're a being wherever you go. So whether it's in your relationship with your partner or whether it's at work or whether it's with your children or whether it's with your friends, whatever it is, you become a different energy frequency and you become attuned to things at a deeper level that then just inform, like you said, infinite intelligence is informing your relationship with your children, with your with your negotiations at work, whatever it is. Super powerful. So the starting point would be for them to go and get this video, right? That's a good first step at the yeah. link, which will be with, we guide them. Uh, I mean, if if it resonates with somebody to actually want to uh, do the course right away, which it's yeah, already- let's talk about the course. Let's talk about the course. So you've got an amazing, like this is a very generous offer for people because you've just launched a live partner, the the actual training. So um, yes, you can get the free video. That'll be a link in the description. But just tell us about um the three things because you you're doing a really beautiful offer. So do you want to just fire away and share what that is? Thank you. So what we've done, you know, as a special uh, form of gratitude, you know, for this invitation to share with your community is anybody who signs up within the first seven days, we're going to have a special window. You can, you know, if you want to sign up six months from now, you're welcome to do so. Our honor to welcome you. But within seven days from seeing this video, uh, you're going to have a very special um, access because of Bernadette's community. And you're going to get a 10% discount. Uh, she'll give, be giving you the um, the code, which is going to be B log, uh, but mm-hmm. I'm sure it's going to be in the uh, you you can I'll see put it in the description. Mm-hmm. If you put that, you're going to have a 10% discount. Number one, number two, for the 10 uh, first members that join 
the course, in other words, those who are really action takers, and if it has resonated with you, which I'm sure it has, then what's going to happen is that the first 10 to register, you're going to have a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me, a consultation, so that we can really dial in some of the things that are here in the course so that you can tell me, you know, Mario, this is the area that I would love the, the AP course, the Allied Partner course to support me with. How can I do this? And then we can really dial it into your particular needs. I think that that is That's super awesome. That's so awesome. I, I know when I have received the support from somebody that they're really in their, in their essence and they really in their purpose and they know what they're doing. It's just sometimes you hear just one thing in the first minute of the conversation. I said, I'm done. I don't need to listen to anything else. I, it right. just changed my life. And that's already happened to some of my, my mentees in the, uh, in the Allied Partner Mentorship. So you, the first 10 for the action takers, action takers get rewarded and they will have that. The third thing that we're also going to do is the first 100 people that register uh, on their uh, uh, Bernadette's uh, community, I will gift you the five books that we reference in the course. And the reason why I want to do this is I don't want a single person that I have had this conversation with to ever come back to me and said, oh, I wish I would have done the course because now one year, 10 years, 20 years went by. You might have spent God knows how much of your personal financial resources to get support only to end up in the same places that I ended up at. The time, the grief, the sorrow, perhaps a divorce. These things are so costly that just doing the course, there's, there's just no, the balance is so offset. It's just so cheap relative to, if you could, if I could actually buy joy for the pain that I endured, perhaps I would do it. You know, people may say, well, that's been your journey. You're here because of it. But you understand what I mean? If you actually I know what you mean. About certain things, it would be like somebody telling you, you have to learn to use the, the program word versus buying a program that in one hour you're using it. Right. Yeah. I mean, journey 100%. for i have to write emails i have to talk to people i i need to learn how to do it you know that's what we're talking about so the the first 100 people to sign up they'll get the books because the books are going to complement you're going to understand you're going to use it in the modules and i also want to say something this is really important as i say modules this is not a course for a month to to just start doing one piece and six months later you do a little bit what i my pledge and commitment is in five weeks, if you do it as I guide you, you will have a massive transformation in your relationship, in your life. Independent whether your partner wants to do it or not, do not make him, if you're a woman listening to this, be the obstacle for your journey. If you're a man listening to this, do not put a woman as the obstacle to your journey. Just commit yourself and do it. Why? Because like I said, we, have, we don't have resources of this nature. And I have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in almost three decades to get here. So let's just not suffer anymore unnecessarily. Right, right. I mean, I look, put 10 years and just so a lot of see it's 10 years of work in one program, like 10 years of grueling and like 25 years of personal growth, but like the trudging through the things, like you, all of the things from the decades of figuring it out and doing it all the ways that don't work and then putting it into this condensed, like to have that level of wisdom and life IP into a condensed thing where you can soak that up in five weeks is just gold. It's gold. The thing too that we've added to this as a special bonus to the community is once again, along the lines of my commitment to seeing people. I don't want to have somebody say, oh, we got Dr. Mario's scores and it was okay. No, I'd rather not have you buy it. And, and if that's the case, I'll figure out a way for me to do more so that people really experience what I'm talking about because it's possible for you. So in order to support that and in honor of, you know, Bernadette's community, I will do two live Zoom calls that will be at least an hour, one in the front end on the launching of, the course and one on the back end. Why? Because I do not want somebody to say, I bought a course and I don't even know who sold it to me and the person is gone. No. Listen, I have bought those programs. Everything I'm doing here is the opposite of what I've actually done because it doesn't work. I want This is about community building. I don't want people saying, I bought a course. No, I joined a community. I joined a group of conscious people that get me. 
I joined a group of people that are really committed to this. We don't have a Facebook group and I'm not going to do that. I personally don't really like that stuff that much. I want privacy because the men that we're talking about, they like privacy, but I know many yeah. women do. And yeah, I, don't, same. <laughs> I just, I'm sensitive to the fact of what I have seen and what has worked and not worked. And there is to that, to that regard, there is the AP community inside of the hosting uh, platform where the program is. And you've seen it, Bernadette. So people, it's not being published in Instagram and Facebook no, and whatever. It's very private. It's very private to be able to, and that's really important. Like even for women in my community, we have a beautiful community where we all join on private Zoom. But but it's also possible to be in there. And I've got people that go in there and they just do the thing privately in the background, and they they don't necessarily want to. They they people might come and do your course and come to those live Zooms on the front end and back end and have their video off, and they're just going to be privately there with their little, you know, with their with their you know, blank screen, and that's fine too, right? It's about access to the person who's here to help you. So um, I'm going to make sure that in the description is all the information, the links for people to go through to get your free video, to find out about the course, to take up the opportunity for those offers that you've put forth. It has been so wonderful. I mean, we, you and I, unfortunately, for everybody listening, could talk for hours and hours and hours and hours. So we better pull this down. <laughs> it's not even getting, I think it's too night out there. Um, really? Like this time war, I was like, okay, well, I'm speaking to Brenda. It's like, I'm gonna have to give myself a week every time we need to do this. I know, all right? I can't wait to see you again in person and to enjoy maybe a nice glass of red wine and have a chat and a catch up again in person. It's been wonderful to be able to invite you here and have this conversation online with the community and to bring in a man to talk about this from a man's perspective to the men in the community, to the women in the community that are wanting to enhance an intimate and connected loving relationship with your partner i'm so grateful for you and for kim and for the beautiful alive partner work that you guys have birthed into the world together so thank you and i encourage everyone to come through and find out more about it all thank you so much for your time mario mine and, and thank you for allowing me to be here and welcome me into your community and i really look forward you know from from my heart to welcoming as many of you as possible and and supporting you in this journey. Bernadette is a friend, so she's not going to go away and she'll get to hear or even, you know, come into some of these calls with us. Um, but do not waste your time a single day knowing knowing what you know now. It's like what we talked in the beginning of this conversation. You've come to this degree of, of development in your own life and you can't go back, right? So once you've been exposed to knowing that this is real um, and, and it's not about a course, it's about life. And now we can actually expedite getting from point A to point B in a fairly painless way and create invitation for our men because guess what? There's exercises that are guided in the course that the man needs to actually, if he's following it as prescribed, he needs to come to you. So this is not a separate journey. I don't want separation. We want integration. And yes. uh, you may be the one that gets the Alive Partner course and you start saying, hey, I'm going to watch this, come and join me. Before you know it, he'll be really the one in the sofa watching if you're in the kitchen. Now he's by himself. <laughs> so do <Yes>. not. <laughs> your power, your female power and the men who are here. I'm so glad that there's some of us that really get this in and we're changing the world by doing this. So thank you for the honor of being in service. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much.